This is The Sam Pit. I'm your host, Sean Cole, but the real star of today's show is this split personality or dual personality sim chassis that goes by the name FGT. The FGT is a next generation sim chassis out of the good people out of next level racing. And the FGT, as I mentioned, is dual personality, as in it stands for both formula and GT, and that's referring to its driving position. The FGT has replaced the F1 GT, and with that change, they have carried over some of its features and then made some upgrades or modifications to make it even better. The FGT SIM chassis goes for $499 here in the States, and that makes it one of the least expensive SIM rigs that I've ever tested here on the show. So what do you get for $499? The FGT SIM chassis is an all-metal chassis made of powder-coated square steel tubing with a matte black finish to it. The FGT is a modern racing chassis, and with that, it is compatible with all Logitech, Thrustmaster, and Fnatic equipment, as well as it will work out of the box with the AccuForce wheel. The chassis is highly adjustable, and as I mentioned, it can be converted from formula to GT-style driving position. The FGT comes with a shifter adapter and a butt kicker mount included, and also has a monitor stand available for separate purchase. It also features an adjustable seat both in distance on sliders and an angle through a lockdown screw with three different positions. The seat is padded and upholstered in a faux leather or vinyl with an embroidered logo on the front and back. The FGT also comes with adjustable feet to keep it level on any surface. When the FGT comes to your house, it comes in one giant shipping box that weighs about 100 pounds. When you open that box, you'll find the retail box with all the cool graphics on the outside. When you open that, you're going to find first the seat itself, the bottom, the back, and the lumbar support. After the seat, you'll find a second box, and inside of that, a series of metal square tubes in various different lengths. Each piece is perfectly aligned into the box and individually wrapped in bubble wrap. Also individually wrapped are some flatter pieces such as the front cross brace, and the wheel and pedal decks. There are instructions and a plastic pack with all the hardware and tools needed to complete the assembly. In total, the FGT is made up of 22 pieces, including the seat parts and all of the metal pieces included. Upon inspection of the parts, there were no scratches, no dents or dings, but one piece did have a little bubble paint that was still trying to hang on to the metal. The instructions are very well laid out, but you are going to want to read them or pay attention because you can put some things on backward and have to redo it later. But the whole rig is very light and putting the pieces together, you can do on your own, no problem. It's very easy to maneuver around. Now, when you first get things started, it doesn't matter whether you're going with formula or GT style, it all starts the same way. It starts with building the two main side rails of the FGT chassis. The longest pieces or side frames join up with the floor posts and one bolt holds them in place. You then join them together with the front plate and the support post. For formula configuration, it goes in the very last or furthest back hole. And for GT configuration, it goes in the third from the front hole. So we go with the last one for now, building it in the formula style. Then we move on to the seat. The seat support rails mount to each side of the seat. It has a little threaded piece of metal that fits into the seat base and holds the sides on. In my case, the seat cross rails weren't perfectly aligned, so I needed to make some adjustments. However, none of my tools were strong enough to actually loosen the bolts, and I ended up pulling out a hammer and giving it a few gentle taps until I got things aligned. That allowed me to line the bolts with the little pieces of metal and get it all tightened down. Then we move on to the seat angle adjusters that allow for three different positions of seat angle. I got a little confused here as the adjusters were identical instead of one clearly left or right. A quick rebuild of one side and now I had a left and right that can be installed on the bottom half of the seat. Then bring in the back part and get the three bolts per side to hold it in place. The seat can then be mounted to the chassis. I found it easier to mount the top or front holes first and then tighten down the rear end to the chassis. We can then add the wheel support bars. There's one for each side of the rig and they have telescoping arms. 
The bar should lean backward in the direction of the driver, and it's a simple two bolt per side to hold them down on the side rails. The wheel deck then goes between them with two bolts per side. The wheel deck plate can be pivoted on its rear bolt and then has five different positions or angles to lock down the deck with the two front bolts. When building the chassis as a formula style rig, you will install the pedal angle bar. It works as another cross brace and like the wheel deck, it has a pivot side of the mount and the adjustable side of the mount with seven different angles or lockdown positions. Now I can mount the pedal deck to the cross brace. It uses four bolts to hold it down in position and then it has a massive amount of front to back adjustment to be utilized. And that completes the assembly of the FGT in the F or formula driving position configuration. Now it's time to install my equipment and I want to start things off easy. So I went with the Thrustmaster XW combination. And like I said, the rig is pre-drilled for Logitech, Thrustmaster and Fanatic. So this turned out to be pretty easy. The FGT came with M6 hardware, which made it even easier. Two bolts for the wheel, done. Two bolts for the pedals, done. Some wiring, some wiring cleanup with the provided Velcro tie downs and we are all done with the install. And dialing it in was actually just as easy, but it did take a little jumping in and out of the rig, making adjustments, back in and out of the rig, making adjustments just to get it right, but it was pretty simple. I started with the pedals and moving the entire assembly back and forth by loosening the four bolts holding it to the side rails and then sliding it to the right distance and tightening those bolts down. The angle is then adjusted by loosening the pivot bolt and removing the angle hold down bolts. Then I adjusted the angle to make me happy and locked them down in place. Now it's time to get the wheel deck where it belongs. Forward and backward is adjusted similarly to the pedal deck. You loosen the four bolts holding it to the side rail and then slide the whole assembly front and back to its position and then lock it down. There are then four smaller bolts on the supports to lock down the telescoping tubes. I loosen up the four bolts to get the deck to the correct height and then lock them back down again. And then I can just adjust the wheel deck angle to finish off my driving position. I loosen the pivot side bolt and then remove the angle adjustment side bolts, adjust the angle to my driving position and then reinsert the angle bolts and lock down all four bolts. At this point, we're good to go. Now, before we get down to driving, let's take a quick look at our now assembled in the Formula Driving Position FGT racing chassis. My first thought are that for a full-sized rig, it has a very small footprint. It is narrow and long in looks and very low to the ground. The tubing looks much more substantial when put together than it looked or felt as individual tubes as I was putting it together. It's not super fancy, it isn't super elegant, but there is something about the FGT that looks legit. It looks ready to race. The overall dimensions of the rig are very reasonable. The FGT in its longest configuration stretches out to about 76 inches or 193 centimeters long. In my configuration, it was only 58 inches or 147 centimeters front to back and it's only 21 inches or 53 centimeters wide without the shifter mount. With the shifter mount, it is about 26 and a half inches or 67 centimeters wide. Now let's go ahead and take her for a spin. Let's go ahead and kick those tires and see what she's made of. As I mentioned, the FGT is very low to the ground. And at my age, that meant I actually had to learn to get into the rig just to be able to drive it and it is a tight fit getting your legs into the chassis as well. But once I was in, I was comfortable and I had my components where they belonged. The driving position is definitely a formula position and it almost feels like I am sitting on the floor. In fact, I don't need a keyboard mouse holder because the floor, it's right there. And it feels as though my feet are high in the air, but in reality, it isn't as reclined as it feels. It's actually very comfortable. Under the load of the Thrustmaster equipment, I was very happy with the chassis. I'm using the conical brake mod for the Thrustmaster pedals, and this increases the pressure on them. But even with that, I found the pedal plate to be fairly stiff. I did feel a little tiny amount of flex, but it was minimal and not even a thought once in full driving mode. 
I liked the angle that I had achieved and it made for easy use of my ankle to operate the pedals in the formula position. And that is very important to me in a lay down rig. The wheel deck was even more rigid than the pedal deck. At this height and with this great positioning, there was very little movement out of the deck in any direction at all. And the seat, despite its being thinly padded, was quite comfortable in this position. It also seemed to support my body well, including under the thighs making for easy, reliable footwork on the pedals. Coming from next level racing, despite being an inexpensive price, I did expect this to handle the loads of a Logitech Thrustmaster Fanatic wheel and pedal set pretty well, but I also wanted to subject it to a much heavier load. So I figured, how is it gonna handle the heavier wheelbase, the stronger wheelbase of something like a Bodner? How is it gonna handle a heavy duty load cell or a hydraulic pedals like my Rickmotech Real Gear pedals? Those are the paces that I now wanted to put it through, but it was gonna take a little work to get them installed. It was not pre-drilled for my wheel, so I did have to quickly measure out and drill four holes, and that went pretty easy with the plate being fairly thin. Then I readjusted my wheel deck for the difference in the wheels, and I was ready to go there. The Rickmotech pedals were even easier. They mount to Logitech hole patterns, and the pedal base happened to fit perfectly on the tray. Four nuts on the bolts later, and we were all done with that. We just had to adjust the distance and the angle. Ready to go. When driving with the Bodner wheel, I expected to see or feel some movement from the rig. But much to my happy amazement, that was not the case. The FGT held up very well and resisted movement in any direction. The rig was quite happy with the wheel, and the wheel was happy with the rig. The FGT is a solid rig meant for any wheel on the market. The pedal deck did its job, but not quite as well. There was some noticeable flex under heavy braking load. I could feel the flex in my feet, but it was not to the point of distraction. This was only flex, and at no point did it change its angle or adjustment. Just a bit of flex that was a little bit more pronounced on camera than what I felt in my feet, but it was definitely obviously happening. Overall, the FGT held up well and even dealt with the heaviest gear that I have. It can go high end. Now I just need to learn how to get out of the rig in the on the floor formula driving position. And now it's time for me to do something that I've never done before, something that I've always wanted to do, and something that I've been waiting for some manufacturer out there to finally do it. Make a rig that converts from formula driving position to GT driving position. And it turns out you can do it a lot easier than you'd think. It actually took me longer to get it dialed in than it did to do the actual conversion. I started by loosening the two front bolts on the seat and then removing the back bolts. I can then lift up the seat, then I can add one of the seat supports to both sides on the seat rails and then reattach it to the seat. This put the seat rails parallel to the floor and in line with the rest of the rig and move the seat cross brace to the third hole from the front. This is also when you can add the butt kicker mount to the bottom side of the seat. It uses the two supplied bolts and allows for the Gamer 2 style clamp on butt kicker. In this new position, you will need to also move the wheel and pedal deck. In the case of the pedal deck, we have two choices. You can leave them in the upper mounts and adjust the angle and distance to make you comfortable, or you can move them to the lower position on the front cross support. This does not allow for any angle adjustment, but it does move them to a lower position. The wheel deck had to be pushed away, raised up, and needed a slight angle adjustment. Again, the FGT came through and achieved exactly what I wanted or needed to cover that. My Rickmotech pedals prefer a flatter angle than many pedals out there on the market. I left the pedal deck on the higher mounts and pushed them farther away and was able to get good position there as well. So with the wheel deck in a slightly higher position, my initial thought or concern would be additional wheel wobble or movement of any kind. But once again, and much to my amazement, the FGT came through again. The wheel deck had very little movement and it continued to have a very strong wheel deck in general. With the pedals in a higher position, I found the wheel deck to be somewhat close to my knees. It wasn't an issue while driving, but it did make things a little tight getting in and out of the rig. 
my overall comfort was not quite as good as it was in the formula position. Because I had the pedals in a higher position, it left my thighs unsupported. If I moved the pedals to the lower position, I did not have that issue. Despite that thigh support not being there, I was still in a good driving position and all of my gear was where I needed it to be. I also added the shifter for the GT configuration. It was a decent shifter mount that could use a little more adjustability, but it got the job done. But here I was, driving the same rig, in a new position, and doing it with heavy duty equipment in a good driving position. I ran a series of races on it in both configurations, and the rig worked great. After driving in both positions, I did actually prefer it in the formula position, but could race season after season in either and be consistent and happy about my rig at the same time. Normally during a review, I cover all the adjustments and give you raw measurements, but usually it's a rig that only works one way. In the case of the FGT, we have two different driving positions and each has its own range of adjustments. In addition, because each piece mounts to the side rails, where your wheel deck is mounted can affect where the pedals can be mounted. But for the most part, here are the adjustments, which one way or another should work for just about any size driver. The seat has three different angles that can be adjusted at the hinge. I found the middle position fine for me, and then the seat moves on its rails about 7 inches or 178 millimeters front to back. The wheel deck can be moved forward and backward about 3.5 inches or 89 millimeters with where I had my pedals mounted. If the pedals are in the lower mount, then you have about 10 inches or 254 millimeters front to back adjustability. It can also be raised up and down 7 inches or 178 millimeters and then can be adjusted in an angle as well. The pedal tray can then be adjusted at the hard mount to the side rail location, 4 inches or 102 millimeters, and then the deck itself can be moved another 8 inches or 203 millimeters front to back, and then it also has its angle adjustments from there. Here's a good example of its range as you see me in the smallest or shortest setting I can get out of the rig. And then me again, in it as stretched out as I can get it. I did this in both the formula and the GT positions, and you can see there's plenty of room on both sides of the spectrum. In the formula position, the seat moves at the angle that the seat sits at. So instead of all seven inches going front to back, some of that movement is actually up and down, and this is actually really good for shorter drivers wanting to see over the wheel. So we have gone over just about every detail there is about this rig. We have covered building it and driving it as a Formula One or a GT style sim rig. But let's go ahead and keep things simple by breaking it down to the good, the not so good, and the bottom line on the next level racing FGT sim racing chassis starting off with the good and the first thing being its great price. Formula and GT style driving positions ability to get perfect position of your components, very stable platform, works for a variety of body shapes or types, comes with a shifter mount, reversible shifter left or right, comes with a buck kicker mount, bang for buck, highly adjustable, Pre-drilled for Logitech, Thrustmaster, Fanatic, and AccuForce. Multiple pedal mounts. Extra hardware, including mounting hardware, M6. All adjustment points held strong. Seat works for all width of drivers. Easy to move for a full-size rig well packaged and now on to the not so good the seat is a bit flat excessive adjusting will leave marks on the rails formula position is literally on the floor 
Pedal deck flex under heavy load. Shifter mount limited adjustment. And now on to the bottom line. The Next Level Racing FGT is one of the least expensive sim racing chassis out there on the market. Granted, there are some other cheaper ones out there, but I don't take any of them very seriously. And I did have some doubts about the FGT as well. But I have to be honest, the FGT, it surprised me at every turn. It came through. It was stronger than I expected. It was more comfortable than I expected. It was more adjustable than I expected. Sure, there was a little bit of pedal deck flex, but very little movement. And then when it came to its dual personality, I thought, nah, there's no way it's going to convert from one to the other, be strong, and actually do it with an uncompromised driving position. But I was wrong. It was easy to adjust. It was rigid and solid in both positions, and I was able to get all of my equipment where I needed it to be in both positions as well. Again, it surprised me. When I first thought about the Next Level Racing FGT chassis, before I even got here, but considering it $499, I thought, ah, knowing these guys, it'll probably work. It just won't be that spectacular. Sure, it won't be as beautiful as those curved metal multicolored chassis that are out there, but with its steel box construction, despite that, there is still something cool about the way it looks. It is slender. It has some nice angles to look at. It doesn't look like one of those less expensive rigs on the market. And what I did love the most about the FGT racing chassis, it's the one rig that really should work for just about everybody in the sim racing world. If you're big, if you're tall, if you're small, if you want formula, you want GT position, you're on a tight budget, but you want a legitimate pro sim racing rig, it cures all of those needs with one chassis. Now granted, those who are looking for the super high end of our hobby, they probably aren't going to be satisfied with the F1 GT chassis. But how many rigs allow you two different driving positions, a good amount of rigidity, and the ability to adjust for any driver, any wheel, and any pedals on the market? Just this one by my count. Now granted, it was easy to change it from formula to GT or GT to formula. However, it's not the kind of thing I'm going to do between races. Now, I might do it between seasons. So if this season I'm running oval or GT cars, I might have it in this position. But if next season I'm in open wheelers, maybe I'm going to drop it down to the formula position. Either that or I would just leave it in the formula style because I preferred it slightly over the two positions. My overall opinion of this rig was very good. You can spend more money and get a lot less functional or adjustable of a rig. It was comfortable, it was strong, and it was dual position for only $499. I'm impressed, that's for sure. So I think I told you everything you want to know about the Next Level Racing FGT Sim Racing chassis. If you want to know more, you can find them at nextlevelracing.com. And of course, if you have any questions of me, if there's anything I didn't cover in this review, you send me an email at sean at and I'll be sure to answer your question. That's going to do it for this one. Be sure to subscribe to the channel so you can find out about our next review, when it's coming, when it's live for you to see. This is The Sim Pit. I'm Sean Cole and I'll see you on the track.